Uh, Senator Lautenberg uh, and I are, are here today uh, at a place of justice uh, where we uh, continue to pursue uh, justice in the case of the release of the Pan Am 103 bomber. Uh, we were going to be joined uh, by uh, a member of the families, but unfortunately she called today and due to an illness won't be with us, but we've heard from several of the families who have urged us to continue to uh, uh, pursue uh, the truth in this matter, and uh, we are doing so uh, on their behalf and also with our colleagues, uh, Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand, uh, who couldn't be uh, with us today. Uh, Abdel Basset al Megrahi began uh, August 20th of 2009 looking at the inside of a jail cell. He began that day locked up, serving justice for his cold blooded murder of 270 innocent people in the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103. 189 of those individuals were Americans, 38 of them were from New Jersey. But he ended that day stepping off an airplane and into the arms of a cheering throng in Libya, the recipient of a hero's welcome. A mass murderer tasting freedom, experiencing joy, it was a scene that made the stomach turn that made old wounds fresh again in the hearts of those whose family members died at the hands of this man. And although this scene, this entire turn of events, was met with anger and frustration throughout our country and in many other corners of the world, Scottish officials invoked their legal right to take this action, allegedly because Mr. Al Megrahi had but three months to live. Well, here we are one year later. Al Megrahi, a convicted mass murderer, is still very much alive and very much free, living in the lap of luxury by all accounts. Doctors who examined him while in prison now say he could live for another decade or more. And every new piece of evidence builds onto the cloud of suspicion hanging ominously over the circumstances surrounding Al Megrahi's release. The hurt and sadness and anger that resurfaced last year for the victims' families is not subsiding. It grows as more questions arise about this terrorist release, as day upon day passes with him alive and free. At the same time, the motivation for future terrorists is growing as well. From the moment Al Megrahi's arrival in Libya was celebrated, every day that passes with him living the high life and every new doubt that arises about his release gives hope to other terrorists. It signals to them that they too can have hands stained with American blood and get away with it. And so on this unfortunate anniversary, on this unwelcome milestone, we want it to be known that our desire for answers is as strong as ever, our resolve is deep and our determination will not fade. The investigation that I have launched and that Senators Lautenberg, Gillibrand, and Schumer have joined and supported presses on in search of the truth. My office has undertaken a thorough review of all documents and statements previously made public and more recently released in response to our initial requests. In doing so, we have developed a full understanding of areas where additional information is needed. Yesterday, we sent letters to Scottish First Minister Alex Salmon and Prime Minister, British Prime Minister David Cameron laying out those areas where questions linger and asking for additional answers and documentation. And I believe those letters are, are going to be handed out here. On the medical front, there are a number of unanswered questions we're asking. Among the most critical is why did the doctor whose prognosis was used by Scotland to free Al Megrahi meet with Libyan officials? And what was discussed at those meetings. Also, what did Scottish officials mean when they promised the Libyans that Al Megrahi's primary doctor would, quote, improve his relationship with Al Megrahi? Was the doctor forced to give statements of medical fact that he truly didn't believe in? We're also requesting that the British government provide full information from all contacts with BP regarding Libya and we want full information about specific known communications between the British and Scottish governments. We also continue to believe that an independent investigation, as we, the four of us asked 
the British Prime Minister when he was in Washington. In the United Kingdom, a independent investigation in the United Kingdom would provide incredibly valuable new information. And we've asked the British and Scottish governments uh, again to begin that process. It is a process that in its first instance doesn't have uh, a, an American genesis. Uh, I want to read uh, from a statement that Prime Minister Cameron made before he was the Prime Minister. He said a year ago, I don't think we can now trust the government to get to the bottom of this, so I think the time has come for an independent inquiry led by a former permanent secretary or former judge to find out what more papers need to be released so we can see what the British government was doing in our name. Uh, that is uh, the comments of uh, Mr. Cameron before he was Prime Minister. And we agree with him that that is exactly what needs to be done. Today we are widening the circle of this investigation and calling on the Libyan and Qatari governments to support and aid a fully independent inquiry. We are sending a letter to Libyan leader Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, Qatari Emir Sheikh Hamad Al Thani, as well as the Scottish First uh, Minister, uh, Minister Salmon. We are highlighting the evidence suggesting that Libya and Qatar used commercial interests to pressure the United Kingdom and Scotland to free Al Megrahi. That includes statements from British government officials, British business organizations, and Colonel Gaddafi's son stressing the fact that Al Megrahi's release was vital to a commercial relationship between the nations. It also includes of commercial ties between Scotland and Qatar and a meeting between Mr. Salmon and Qatar officials at which Mr. Al Megrahi was discussed. Based on these pieces of evidence which add to the cloud of suspicion, we believe that Libya and Qatar should be completely forthcoming in answering questions and releasing documents and should support an independent investigation into the matter. In addition to these requests, my office has put out a call for whistleblowers who might have information that can shed new light on this issue to come forth and talk with us. These conversations can be kept confidential. On the front page of my website, menendez.senate.gov, there is a link to email us with Pan Am Flight 103 information, and we will handle it accordingly. In the coming days, my office will be requesting in-person interviews with individuals that we believe could have uh, illuminating information on this matter. If these interviews must be done overseas, then we will conduct them there. Through our thorough review of existing documents and statements, through additional information we receive as a result of our numerous written requests, through information from whistleblowers, and through in-person interviews that we will conduct, we aim to have a final report that provides new answers on the circumstances surrounding Al Megrahi's release. And we intend for that report to be a key topic of discussion at a rescheduled Senate Foreign Relations Committee hearing that I will chair uh, in September. Through all of these efforts, we intend to get a full picture of what happened, to inform the public, to inform the families, and to inform our nation's policies moving forward. As we have said from the beginning, full information is crucial. As long as there is a cloud of suspicion surrounding the release of this convicted terrorist, there will be families suffering all over again, and there will be other terrorists believing that the price to pay for spilling American blood is small. We're intent on gaining that full understanding of what happened, and we will continue to aggressively and persistently pursue key information. Uh, let me uh, bring to the podium uh, someone who has been involved with the Pan Am 103 family since uh, this horrific tragedy took place. He, he was part of a commission that helped investigate. He has been working with the families for many years, led to drive on making the Libyans responsible for their compensation, not that compensation could ever meet the loss of loved ones, but he has been a champion for these families, and that's Senator Frank Locke.